Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a psychic medium healer, numerologist, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there's always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here is your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. How is everybody doing today on WLTK TV? Let's talk radio. Um, we are in April. Can you believe it? Time flies. Time flies. This year has gone by so quickly, so fast, but that's, you know, a good thing for the most part. We're getting things done, right? We are living our lives. So it's just a matter of how do you want to live yours? And Everyone who's a guest here shares a facet of how they love living their lives, where they found their greatest passion, where they found their greatest truth, where they found these aha moments where life was bigger than themselves. And it just led to further inspiration with, you know, putting themselves out there with meeting new people, with finding other wonderful individuals along the way. And, um, what I really want to get into for the topic of today is trusting yourself, okay? Um, I think we all have these dreams, these thoughts, um, these passions, even if really tiny and really small. And we're like, hmm, that's kind of fun. I've always liked doing this or, wow, I've always wanted to do that. And you might be inspired by other people or it might be like the secret dream that you've always had since you were a kid. And not everyone is going to understand that dream. Not everyone around you is going to respect or even nourish that dream. They might even participate in snuffing it out. Who knows? Who knows the people that you surround yourself with or you'd be growing up. Um, And it's really our job to nourish what we feel is the truth inside of us, the truth longing to come out because we are all facets of finding the truth in this great life. Um, you know, what we know is constantly evolving and it really takes one individual to be a pioneer um, and to contribute. And with things that are just not out there, you need kind of that crazy bravery um, to go, yeah, I think I'm going to do this. Or maybe it is out there, but there's just not enough, right? Maybe in your, your town or in your neighborhood, no one is doing um, what you'd like support in, and you're just like, where, where to start? Um, it's so important within mediumship, within psychic development. Um, in our development, we find teachers, and sometimes they're quality teachers, but they don't even understand who we are and what our unique facts, facets are. I'm sure people who are interested in spiritual development, they can uh, remember or, um, you know, attest to Sometimes they have these unique gifts, right? And they're just not understood because they're not even in conventional mediumship or spiritual development. There's some people that talk to their guides. A lot of times in traditional mediumship, guide work is very personal work. It's not um, additional, let's say, sector that's developed um, amongst teachers in mediumship. Or people get a lot of, let's say, communication with the spirit in, in a way that just isn't your typical. Um, And people are like, no, that's not the way to do it. You want to look here, you want to do that. Or let's say you get a lot of information before um, a reading or before you see somebody. Some people are like, that's normal. Other people are like, that's a boundary thing. So there's so many ways to do readings, to tap into energy and to live your life. And honestly, as long as you're happy, as long as you're healthy, as long as you're living in truth and your life is very demonstrative of that um, personally with what you know in your heart and where you are with other people, then that's what you need to be doing. Um, There's reasons there's teachers in the world to guide and usher in more knowledge. And that can only go so far. We need new teachers in the world. We need new people in the world to bring their unique spark, their unique take. Um, 
You know, one thing that I think I'm really going to highlight too is just today we have Todd Bates on the show and, you know, that is his world, like going, researching, proving things and gaining evidence about the spirit world, the paranormal. And he's like, some of these things I believe wholeheartedly strongly and other things I'm not sure, you know, we're, we're developing. Um, if, you know, that experience was real or, you know, we absolutely have EVP, that's a lot of electronic voice phenomenon um, because he's a paranormal researcher among other wonderful things. Um, And, you know, that world is all about, okay, where are we going to push the envelope or what do we have here and will people believe us? Um, And they're really pioneering the world of gaining paranormal research. Um, and in their, you know, minds, they're like, this is our lives. Like we wholeheartedly have passion and conviction in our work. Um, and that's just one example, right? We, we could hear time and time again, there's, there's experiments in, in science that aren't supported sometimes. And that's, and that's the scientific method. So we have to live in our truth. And sometimes when there's so much going on around us, um, you know, life is busy. Life is so busy. We have to make time and space for ourselves where we can go, what do I really want? What do I really need? I talk a lot about that on the Psychic Hour, kind of as the intro. Um, And I kind of put that question back to you in, in various platforms and in various ways, because, you know, how do we live a meaningful life, right? And we have to really ask ourselves these questions. And part of living a meaningful life is trusting ourselves. If we don't trust ourselves, I truly believe we will always be in confliction of ourselves and and others because we don't trust particularly others. We don't trust particularly ourselves. Um, Even if what we are doing is meaningful. So we have to know that it's worth it. Um, there has to be that that deeper reason that carries us through. And we need time in order to find that. And we need trust because sometimes you like something, but you don't know you're going to love it. Or let's say you're curious about something, but you don't know you want to abandon your old life for it, right? Um, and you have to trust yourself. You have to go, I, I like this. I'm going to look into it. I'm going to open that door. And so part of trusting yourself doesn't mean you have to jump off these huge cliffs always. Sometimes you do. Um, That's surrender. That's like big and spiritual work. Um, But these little cliffs kind of let you trek, right? And you go, "Mm, okay, wow, I actually really like this. And I met some cool people from it. Or, wow, I really like that. I don't think I'm going to do it anymore. But that just opened the doorway to this now. And it's just like we have to trust ourselves with doing other people necessarily aren't doing around us. I think that's what makes life colorful and that's what makes life have its spark. And a lot of us sometimes, because life is so busy, we go and we sometimes even lose our spark um, doing the things that we like or love because we're not following the greatest purpose within ourselves. So, so important to be leaping from cliff to cliff, (laughs) even if a small little jump, mixing up life. Well, I know for sure um, when we bring in Todd um, in a little bit, he certainly has done that. He's so multifaceted in his skills. He is, you know, passionate about radio. He's passionate about helping others like lift themselves up and have a platform. That's why he created this, this radio station. How cool is that? He's the founder. Um, and he juggles, he juggles and he's doing so much in the name of this work. And that's why he's such a wonderful guest to have on really full, um, facilitates, um, to others what it means to have like just a full life full of your passions and ever growing and ever expanding in his work. He's always expanding. I could, as soon as we get him talking, you'll understand what I mean. So, That's my question back to you. Are you trusting yourself 
with what you feel you really want? And are you trusting yourself when you're nervous and you're like, I'm not sure if that's a good idea. I'm not sure if I should be doing that. Maybe it's too much money. Maybe, you know, I'm not going to like the people there. Maybe, you know, it's not going to be a good fit. Um, And I'm just going to have wasted my time. And it's just like, you kind of have to gamble with that. Like, I'm a huge proponent proponent of if you're pulled to something and it just feels right for whatever reason dive in why why is that why take the risk right maybe like people are like well you know money's money and if i don't completely want to do it then i'm not sure well here's the thing i like putting my resources together one of my hobbies is kind of like learning from a variety of different people I have to like them. I have to believe in them. I have to think they are of quality, right? But I, you know, sample many different teachers, many different classes, because I like to understand the way that people think in the perspective. Um, I go, oh, wow, they're teaching mediumship this way. Oh, wow, they're teaching healing this way. Oh, wow, they're teaching psychic this way. And it's not because I want to be that way myself. It's not because I'm just like, oh, wow, like I I found the the way. it's because I understand how others might see the world of mediumship, how others might have developed themselves. And I go, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm um, you know, um, familiar with that te- technique or I understand where you're coming from. It just helps make me, makes me a more well-rounded person, a more well-rounded teacher. And to have, I think, really solid expectations with others um, because I put myself in the role of student so often uh, you know, it fulfills my soul in multiple ways. So, you know, when I come to class too, I don't always vibe with how everything is being taught, you know, that's, that's normal. And you might not vibe with all the people, right? I don't, when I show up in a new class, I, I, it's not like I gain 50 new friends every time. No, but I'm there for just one part of a reason. And that one part gets fulfilled something else and opens up to something else and I can't even guess what it is sometimes and so not that you should have you know expectations that are exact but take the leap and trust and just see where life meets you um, because there is a reason trust yourself why you're pulled to a certain place time person class trust yourself and that's my advice for you. It makes life very meaningful and fulfilling. Um, we're going to go to break and when we come back. We're going to bring in Todd and talk about all things paranormal. See you soon. in. Todd is awesome. He has over 20 years of experience in the paranormal and radio world. He's the founder of WLTKDB, this very station. He's the host of Haunted Voices, narrator of the show Ghost Finders, and passionate about all things EVP and paranormal. Welcome to the show, Todd. Oh, you're muted. You're muted. There we go. There's the glitch of the show right there. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. It's my pleasure. How are you doing today? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I can't complain. The sun's out. The rain is gone. I'm loving it. A little tired, but a good kind we're of tired. We're going to wake you up. Good. Let's do it. <laughs> Questions on the fly and back to memory lane. So... One of the things I was talking about earlier is just living this multifaceted, passionate life, you know, and being pulled to your interests. And my goodness, you have so many that you created, evolved, and created even platforms for and a community around because of all your experience in the industry, within radio, within paranormal. Um, Take us back to the beginning, like where you were an individual and you're like, 
you have come so far. So let's go to the beginning. Where where were you at, and how did you find you wanted to get into all of this? Okay. I love this. This this is this is uh, one of my favorite stories to share, and it's how everything began because I was. I was completely skeptical. I didn't believe in any of this. I didn't, I don't know. I, I just, I didn't feel that any, that ghosts couldn't exist. Bigfoot, never heard of them. Um, aliens, maybe because they made Star Wars. I don't know. That was my mindset back then in 2002. And then I was introduced to a, uh, th there was an ad in the paper. It was near Halloween. And there was a local investigation team here. They had a, a, a big, big following, big tour following. Um, and there was a ghost tour. So I'm like, okay, let's, let's do something different. Let's go on one of these ghost tours and see what these things are like. So we contacted the guy that, uh, that ran the tours. Um, his name's Jason Snyder, by the way, awesome guy, still doing them to this day. But, and he says, yeah, they're, they're great. They're a lot of fun. You, you know, if you have a camera, you can bring a camera. If you have a, an analog tape recorder back then there were analog tape recorders, they were analog folks, magnetic tape. <laughs> and he said, you know, you could bring one of those out um, and you can record some ghost voices. Later, I learned they were called the EVP or electronic voice phenomena. So of course that piqued my interest immediately was the ghost voices. Yeah. Okay. That's something that I want to be a part of. So I found a, a GE shoebox recorder. This thing probably weighed 15 pounds with the batteries in it, 25, <laughs> but it was, it was a device and I had the magnetic tape. Um, I had the external microphone, which I highly recommend Did you guys get that to eliminate the, the noise within the gear noise and things. But, but anyway, with, with, with these little three pieces of equipment, well, I'm ready to go. So I go to the ghost tour, pull in there and all these people are running to this old general store. It says it was called the Kibbe general store. It's an old, uh, general store. They were running to the store itself. And I see this little barn in the back. And that's where I went. I just, I left the group. I became a loner, a rebel. <laughs> there, went back there to the back and climbed on top of the wood pile, had a seat, got my recorder ready, and just started talking to the thin air. Is there anybody <laughs> here? Does anyone want to say anything to me? And I'm giving some time in between. Of course, I didn't hear anything at all. Um, Leave the, I, I, I end the, the session. It was about five minutes, 10 minutes. I did that. Left, went back with the group. We continued the tours, saw some really neat things, learned a lot of great, great things. Talked to, to, to Jason quite a bit. So I get home and now comes the fun part where you have to analyze everything. You have to go through your findings. So I play this through the computer and, you know, I didn't hear anything at first, didn't hear anything. Uh, had the question, uh, is there anybody here? And it was the third question that I asked, is there anybody here that would like to say anything? And that's when I hear this stomp. It was like a stomp wow. uh, on, on the tape. Now, and then it goes a little farther. Um, and then you hear this, and, and I'm going to try my best to do this, but it just, it sounded just like a horse. And <laughs> very similar to that. It was like a stomp and then a <laughs> Uh, kind of noise that I captured on that cassette. And I'm thinking, how in the world? There's no live animals here. This, this barn is abandoned. It's caved in. It's, 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 there's no way. The only thing that I can explain is that was what, what is called residual energy or time repeating itself like a record player playing over and over again. But that, uh, my interest, Kelly, right there, right that very moment i wanted to know why did i hear that noise on that tape but i didn't hear it with my naked ear that that doesn't make any sense to me oh i'm a huge believer in that um sound the way that it is in the air you can get past you can get future you can get just what you know is looping in the present uh energy residue is a, is a real big thing Absolutely. I, I think it's so fascinating because you really focus on um, understanding that through sound. 
So um, in my work, I understand things a lot through feeling and visuals. I do get sound from time to time, but like your world really is, is sound. And so do you find that you'll hear things um, and then they will show up on the, the tape recorder or is it a mixture of you'll hear something that won't show up on the tape recorder or you won't, you won't hear anything most times, but then it shows up on the tape recorder. It varies. And that's, that's a great question. It varies. And there's actually a completely different name for that. It's actually called electronic noise phenomenon. If you can hear oh, wow. it with your, your ear, it is a noise phenomenon that somehow generates the, 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 the spirit energy somehow manifests, it manifests itself enough to put off such a vibration as a noise. Right. Um, what I've found over the years is most of them will be captured without hearing anything um, with, with your naked ear. Now, there will be some, some, some instances where you have, uh, you'll have a voice, for example, saying, get out, go on one recorder, and you'll have nothing on the, on the other one that's sitting right next to it. Wow. These are other things that are difficult to explain. You know, and, and then you have your theory as to why. Is it because they mm -hmm. can have enough energy to imprint themselves on one device? Or, you know, it, it, it just, it baffles the mind. It goes on and on. And it so, can drive you crazy. I, I also want to, uh, so you're teaching me things how there's EVP, and then there's also EVN. Uh, excuse me, e, uh, <laughs> electronic voice phenomenon and then electronic Noise phenomenon. Very good. Very <laughs> I'm, good. Not gonna, I'm not going to do the acronym, I think. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. Um, and I'm like, oh, okay. And I'd be curious too, like with that, because um, you kind of get me excited with the possibilities. Um, have you ever had, since with, with what Todd does, it's, you know, paranormal research. So sometimes they have a medium on the premise. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. And so like mediums and psychics, they can hear energy okay that let's say not necessarily is physical sound that everyone can hear so has there been any experiences with like the, the psychic or the medium where they're like i heard this and then it shows up on the tape as well i have had that happen twice okay so it does happen it does happen and it and i love it and i cannot stress enough how important it is for these research teams to take a medium with them, take an intuitive, take an empath, um, bring them because all, all you need everything you can out there. Now, don't get me wrong. There's, there's some great equipment. Equipment, equipment is great to have, but one thing that's most valuable is your common sense. Bring that with you. Uh, your medium would be a part of that common sense, because especially if you're there to communicate, which you are, um, some of us, I'm, I'm, I'm about as sensitive as a brick, I feel. So I'm, I need equipment in order to communicate with the other side as to where a medium, they, they can do it through their energy flow, the vibrations and things. And, 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 and I, I completely back that. I completely back that. Um, I think it's a great way to not only help the client, but most importantly, help the spirit cross over. Perhaps um, that's something I, I don't know how to do. Um, it's something I can could, could suggest, but that could disrupt all kinds of things. You know, you need a medium to kind of help channel these kinds of things through and, and to help with things like that. Um, and and I, I do, I, I recommend them. I, I've had them happen. I've had it happen twice to where, um, they, they, they had a response. They had the, the response to the question and they answered and the medium heard it. And then we, we did capture it on, on recorder as well. That was pretty neat. That was pretty, pretty incredible. Um, but as far as using them, I recommend it. I, I couldn't recommend it enough. Sure. What are your, I think that's another, this is a pretty multifaceted um, big question in mediumship. Um, there's two kind of polarized sides. There's those who believe that, you know, you do cross over spirits with um, some of this work. And then there's others where 
they believe that it's all residue energy and you can um, link and communicate with spirit and their personalities and their histories, but they're not necessarily, their soul isn't necessarily there, but the energy and the trauma is still there or their story is there. Um, what are your personal beliefs on that? Because yeah, a lot of people have many different I can see a combination of both and I've experienced a combination of both residual and what they call a traditional haunting, uh, traditional haunting being aunt Mabel walking across the living room, um, waving at you. Hello. That would be a, a, a traditional haunting, um, aunt Mabel walking across the living room, watering her plants. That would be residual. Um, it's very rare. It's extremely rare. Have I had interaction with an, an apparition before? No, I've never made eye contact with one. And now I've seen a couple, but they were residual. Um, intelligence, uh, an intelligent spirit. Now, my opinion for this is the way these the spirits gain their intelligence and how you can tell the difference. They've crossed. They have crossed over. Um, they are um, aware that they're no longer alive. They are, you know, ready. They can go, they can travel back and forth to where the residual, it is imprinted. Um, a, a, a heavy area for residual energy would be a, a something with a, a limestone foundation, for example. These old historic buildings, they have like the, the old limestone bedrock. Uh, that is very porous. That soaks up like a sponge. So you have all kinds of energy in there. They've proved that 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 you can blow uh, an instrument like a trumpet or a trombone into this, uh, and and it will hold that sound. Wow. Mm -hmm. limestone. I mean, limestone like is full of fossils and stuff. But, you know, interesting. Okay, all right. It holds a lot of residual energy, and it, it's like a sponge. So it's going to get full, and it's going to seep out. So it's going to seep out. And then here comes some of this residual energy. All of a sudden, somebody sees a ghost in the window. All of a sudden, somebody sees uh, an apparition in the living room. Or they see someone sitting in a chair. Uh, you just, it, it could be residual. It could be traditional. There's so many different ties to it. And that's what your team historian is for. If you do have a research team out there, your historian goes out and finds all that information. They crack down the homeowners, the abstract of the home, the whole nine yards, getting it down to the nitty gritty who lived there in the past. And then you, you take that and you collaborate with, with the rest of your team uh, during the investigation and so forth. Okay. We, we did a recording. We got a name of uh, Frank. Well, it says here in 1826 that Frank Johnson lived here. Maybe that's who that is, you know? So that's what the team does as a whole. You have different parts of the team. Like I said, you have your historian, you have your, your lead investigator. You have to have somebody that, that, that does coordinate the whole thing or people trip over each other. It's terrible. It's hilarious. <laughs> it's, like watching, it's like watching the Keystone Cops. <laughs> How many people are usually in a team? You want to keep it between five and seven. I always had between five and seven, a, a large team. You don't need a large team. A large team can create a lot of noise. The more people you have, the more noise pollution you have, the more chance for false positives you have, you know, and, and getting out there, Kelly, your audience as well. It's not our job to prove that spirits exist or anything to anybody. I'm, I've been trying to prove it to myself for years. <laughs> It's one of those things where you're even if, even if you see it, you're going to doubt what you yeah. saw. I I saw. I'm laying on my bed in at the Queen Mary uh, several years ago. I did. I, I was on a speaking circuit at several conferences, and I spoke out there one year. So I'm laying in my bed, waiting, just relaxing, watching the Indianapolis Colts football game, just relaxing. And I'm I'm I kid you not. I'm just laying there. I've got my my hands behind my head like this, just propped up on the pillow. And right across the room, about at that pace, at a slow pace, comes this bellboy looking, clothing was tattered. You know, it was just blowing in the back a little bit. I could see, you could you could make, you could tell that this was a human figure. 
and it just zipped across the room, went right through the wall and out. Uh, walking down the hallway. Have you ever had um, the, a moment where you said, hi, how you doing? And then uh, they answered back, oh, doing great yourself. And then you look back and they're not there. Have you ever had that moment? I have seen people disappear, but I've never had them talk back to me as they disappear. <laughs> that happened on that ship. I believe it. I believe it. I don't have a lot of sound experiences. <laughs> you know? But uh, I, I 100% believe I've had people like just you know, walk in and I go, what is that? And they just, they're, you know, they're, that was rare. Like one time I just had someone float. It was, it was in my house actually. And my house is, I, you know, I don't consider it to be haunted, even though it sometimes can feel like very high vibration in certain parts of the house. Um, but yes, someone just like floated like right by. And I was like, was that real? You know? That was in the beginning days. Was, was that real? Or sometimes at the top of the stairs, you know, someone will just be there and then you'll just watch them disappear mm -hmm. in this house. Right. So I believe in all that. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. It's the thing is how, how do you explain it? You know, and there's there's so many facets to the whole to the whole thing. I could I could sit here for days and just and talk to you about the paranormal and how it works that we believe the theories that are involved, because that's all it is, Kelly, is theory. We have nothing tangible. We have nothing to hold. We have some ghost recordings. We have a few photographs, some, some, some great video, but still no one's convinced. No one's convinced. There's, it, it's becoming, there's so much more, I believe, evidence now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like things are just stacking upon each other and there's, everyone's collaborating to a certain degree. And I, I do think things are being tested scientifically in, in, in a way. It's not, it's not largely out there. It's not like, Hey, we're really researching, cracking down this. It's like independent stuff um, with people's, you know, personal experiences and passions. And I, I think it's going to change like a lot in the next like 15 years. I really do. I hope. I hope, and I, I, I see change as well. What I see, and it, it, I see it becoming more, it's more mainstream than what it used to be. It's not as taboo yeah. as, as what it used to be. Now, the problem is you have a lot of good research teams out there. Their, their time is being used horribly by some people just wanting some free entertainment on a weekend, trying to get an investigation team out there and saying that their place is haunted. So you have to be careful. You know, if you're just starting a research team out there, get a hold of some veterans, get on any social media platform. You can find some good veterans, uh, um, you know, get a hold of, of anybody out there, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask questions because there's a lot of people out there that will just use you for free entertainment. And they're just wanting to get something from you. Uh, to see what it's like to watch, maybe watch all the popular television shows and things like that. So use common sense when it comes to that, of course. Definitely use common sense. You just don't want any Tom, Dick, and Harry in your home either. You want to, you know, as a client, you, you want to be sure that it's a reputable team as well. You know, just because you show up in a polo doesn't mean you're a reputable investigator. You know, you 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 need to interview, you need to you know, the, the client needs to be aware just as much as the investigator needs to be aware because there's a lot of crazy people out there. A lot of teams quit doing residential investigations for that reason. And it's sad because they're being used, abused. Um, there's a lot of life threatening things that have happened as well. They have been, I, I've known of people that have been chased out with uh, firearms, you name it. It gets crazy out there because you're you are in someone else's home right. um, just because they signed a liability waiver. <laughs> Folks, use your head, use your head out there. You're, you're in other people's homes. So be careful. Just be careful. Um, and, and of course, never, never do it alone. I never uh, recommend anybody investigating alone. There should always be done. some someone in teams. You should always be going someplace in, in teams, even within the house while you're in there, folks. Go in teams. 
teams of two, um, not just because safety reasons. You always want a witness. You always want a witness because if 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 I went into a room and saw the greatest apparition of all times, Kelly, right, and I forgot my camera, and no one's with me. Well, I just saw the greatest apparition of all time, but no one, I, I didn't get to share it with anybody. See, so. It's true. It's true. Um, like you really, there has to be like that structure and professionalism and you have to think things through like that because if you're just winging it, okay, you, but you're not going to get the documentation and that's kind of why you're there. I would imagine that's why paranormal research team is there to get the evidence, to get the documentation, to get the recordings. Um, I do think it's really important that you do talk about like how you need, you know, recommendations um, for, for people to, you know, hire real people for people to get real help because I mean, I, I'll just give you my feedback. Um, like when I got into this you know, world of energy, right? And I was just like learning about things and kind of taking in what the world thought about spirits and ghosts or mediumship or psychic, right? I would watch like the, like, let's say a show where they're, you know, researching, going on premises, trying to find, you know, ghosts or help heal a house, you know, the, the, the Discovery Channel shows, right? Yeah. Back in the day. And I would watch them and I'd be kind of interested in some of them and others, the vast majority, I'd be like, just think some of this is staged you know what I mean like I think like some of the people are genuine but it's not and it's not because I didn't believe in the possibility I just didn't think they were showcasing things in the best way and same with like when I got like into in the beginning numerology and astrology when I was researching this all I would go online because it's like right where do we go when we're first learning we're like in a library online or watching a tv show and I thought all the resources on numerology and astrology is online. They weren't clear. They didn't lead people in very clear directions. But nowadays, if you go online and learn about astrology or numerology, I think it's quite accurate with like the beginning foundations. I'm like, great. People actually put together a more realistic view of what this world is. And I'm sure that's happening with paranormal research. You know, I haven't, uh, you know, been on cable in a hot second, so I don't know what what is going on currently in the world, you absolutely would. Like, how have you seen it change in the past, you know, 10, 20 years? Because I'm referencing, you know, like 15 years ago when I'm watching these shows. That's it's quite changed a dramatically. It's changed dramatically um, with television. Television definitely yes. sparked that up. Uh, it also sparked up the equipment, which got also got a lot of great people. It woke a lot of great people up out there, a lot of, a lot of great minds. And they're out there building some really nice equipment, paranormal equipment. Now, some of it, folks, take it with a grain of salt, this equipment. A lot of it's garbage. It's just rubbish. Just throw it away. These apps, don't use them. Uh, right. Yes. It's just, they're for entertainment. Be careful. But it's changed so much because of television. Uh, people are more open to talk about it now. They, they, they're, they're willing to come out and share their experiences. And, and what, what I found, you know, I'm, I'm not active as active as in the field as I used to be. I mean, I, I'm doing some things on the side. It's not much. Um, I'm slowly getting back into it because I get obsessed. <laughs> I want to know why. And I want, so I have to, I have to, to, to really uh, monitor what I'm, there we go monitor what I'm doing out there because I'll, I'll get obsessed with it. Uh, but it's, it's, it's good to have that, the balance, you know, you got to have the, the balance between the two there. Okay. Sorry about that, Kelly. I had to do a little bit of production. <laughs> up there. No, it's okay. I was like, Oh, are you pulling up something? No worries. I was, I was giving it a moment, giving it space, but um, yeah, like, you have to, I, I really believe in that you have to have balance, even though you are fully invested, you know, you believe in paranormal research, you've had so many experiences, it's a cornerstone of your life. Um, I believe in you have to like 
effectively live your life, you know, and you can't let your passions rule your life. Yeah. It's like everything else will be grounded. It's like, you, know, you still have to feed yourself. You still have to pay for the bills. You still have to do the laundry. I know that sounds so mundane, but it's like, if you're just like zeroed in and you're just like, hmm, everything else kind of falls away. And especially with that energy, because that energy, like spiritual energy, it ungrounds because you have to be in a different uh, awareness state and a different perception to even catch things. You can't look at things with physical eyes. You can't hear things with physical ears. So, yeah, balance is is, is key. Balance is key. And it's, it's funny how everything comes together because here I am. I didn't believe in any of this skeptical. Now it's my life. It's what I do. I talk about the paranormal. I have the station that's paranormal based and the the ghost finders. I mean, I love working with the paranormal. It's just, it's a good community. And I know that there's a lot of great people within this community. There's, there's some bad people too. You're going to have the good and the bad. But one thing I'd like to see is, is, is a little more, a little more unity, a little more collaboration between all of us, a little more sharing, I think, because see your neck of the woods, the energy, the metaphysical world, you guys have it together. I wouldn't say that. And I'm going to be raw and vulnerable. (laughs) Um, You know, like Like I, the medium world, you have you know the meta metaphysical world, you have the cryptozoology world, and is, the UFO is. world. Look at all three of those. They're all squared away. They have MUFON. You guys have all kinds of training courses, set guidelines. Uh, cryptozoologists are, are coming out with the same things. Now, the only field, and people call this the paranormal field. I I, I like to call it the ghost and hauntings field. Uh, because the paranormal is all encompassing, I believe. But the the ghost and haunting side of this, look at us. We're scattered. We're not working together. We really have no set guidelines. You know, and 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 I'd like to see more of that in the community. And the problem is just it takes a lot of hard work. It takes people stepping up, and it may cost have a little cost to get all this together too. But we need something out there. You know what? I think like a lot of people in these various, um, you know, kind of like you said, the crypto zoology, the mediumship, the Mm -hmm. paranormal research, a lot of these people are kind of like rebels. Uh, They don't kind of do things the typical way and they're used to being loners, you know what I mean? And so it's like, I think that that's why you haven't, let's say, seeing community kind of start to come together as naturally as one would expect. I think there's, within the mediumship world, there's a tremendous vein of healing that's been put awareness on. And for the sake of healing, people have had to come together. And there's going to be certain sparks. Like, there should, I think there should be healing in all the work, and there is, but there's certain sparks with, like, the leaders or the pioneers within these, like, fields and they're like this is the reason we need to come together and so um mediumship has been around for quite a bit and so we've had time to put it together right right um but we're still you know just me being one voice of the many years of mediumship and, and, and psychic the psychic world there's a lot of people still getting it together there's there's a lot of rules and regulations that really don't fit a lot of people and then there's a lot of people that do things their own way and it's like yeah we need a little bit of rules and regulations to that like there's people are still figuring it out and i think that's why i enjoy talking about it so much more than getting out there in the field now i i've been out there in the field kelly i've had the hell scared out of me i i tell you what there's if we have time there's there's something that uh I want to share because it just goes to show you that things can happen anytime and anyone can change their mind at any given moment. And there, there was something I was asked to do several years ago called the Ashmore experiment. Yeah. I wanted to ask about that. Yes. This was at Ashmore estates in Ashmore, Illinois. 
and it was with our local uh, news team, Channel 10, a CBS affiliate. The weatherman, Kevin Orpert, wanted he wanted to to he 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 uh, contacted me. He says he wanted to have a team of skeptics, and he wanted to have a team of believers. Well, he brought them both to the Ashmore Estates and had me head up the whole thing and go in there and teach them how to do this, show them how to do this. And they, they used my equipment and everything. And we had that experiment that went all weekend long. And these people, these skeptics, they, uh, uh-uh, they, they, they were skeptical about being skeptic. I, mean, <laughs> I believe it. They were really, really skittish. And unfortunately all of them left skeptics. Now, Kevin, the weatherman, was a skeptic as well. But what had happened was he was out front. Now, I was with one of the teams doing a recording session. He was out front with uh, the cameraman getting ready to do a live thing. And he fell. And all of a sudden, I hear my name being screamed on the radio to come down there and help. And I rush down there. There he is. What had happened? He had saw something behind the nurse's station, an apparition behind the nurse's station. It startled him. He stepped step back, tripped, and broke his shoulder. Oh no! So oh, no. it dislocated his shoulder. So for weeks he was doing the local weather <laughs> with the sling on. Wow! <laughs> but he's not. He's not a skeptic anymore. He believes. Wow! And he was the he was the one I was worried about the most. So it's not about us proving. Hey, you, we're going to bring you to this haunted location and we're going to prove to you because you, you can't do that. He had to have his own experience, which he did. And that changed him for the rest of his life. Yeah. I, I totally believe in that mentality and attitude. You can't make anyone believe um, it has to spontaneously happen. Be the right time for the person. It can even gradually happen. Right. But it has to be the right time for the person. I do believe that there are people so, you know, ingrained in this work and so much a light for this work that they can, you know, turn on those switches within other people. Because I believe we all share, you know, energy. We all share thoughts. We all share feelings. Yeah. So sometimes somebody can open that light up for somebody, but you can never look at it that way because that's enormous unnecessarily pressure you can never control you could be the most you know but there could be the most amazing apparition in the room and someone will not have eyes to see it Mm -hmm. because they're like there's no way that's real or it's so subtle that they just they don't see it and it's so hard it was hard for me when i when i saw the, the, the first one I saw was of a little girl. It, it's the little Sally's, the Sally's house in, in Kansas. Um, and it was so hard for me to accept that I saw that because I could see her and I could <laughs> see the cabinets behind her, through her, looking directly through her. So that, and, and I, I had to talk to a Catholic priest about seeing her. <laughs> I, I was I was questioning my own sanity. I thought I was going crazy or needed new medication or something. <laughs> but no, uh, it, it, these and it, it was each time I, I had. Well, the second the second one I saw was it was a shared experience. But most of them were by myself. I was alone, either in my room. That one, uh, there, there were three of us that saw her. So that that helps validate. That's called a collective apparition when when more than one person. Uh, sees sees that but there's so many things with the human mind you know and it's do we see them all the time yet our minds are closed or just shut off so we don't see them all the time unless we're concentrating on it so many things that i went over in my mind all these years 20 plus years i'm i'm yeah There's all that. I do think there's seriously, like, for instance, you can have, um, let's say energy sensitive people or, you know, intuitive psychic mediums in a room and they're not going to see, you know, just like in your paranormal research, they're not going to pick up on everything in the exact way. Mm -hmm. But what starts validating things is when you have commonalities or, you know, you 
can write things down or describe things where you're not feeding off each other. You're literally seeing and building on the same thing. Right. Um, so you can, you know, do that in a way where it's like, don't tell me, let's all write it down. Or you can just start talking and, you know, you have someone separately, let's say with the paranormal research, like the historian of the group, or let's say the loved one that knows, you know, the history of what happened. They can go, yep, that's right. Yep, that's right. And it becomes this collaborative effort. And then you really start to know that you aren't seeing things, you aren't hearing things like this stuff definitely exists outside of you and you can't just turn your back on that world because it's real i know yeah and there's plenty of things like my gosh like even let's say um you know i'm a big fan of finding a teacher to help guide you or uh, you know finding people with more experience in the field any field because it just it gets you to where you're going faster it gives you perspectives um you know, you wouldn't otherwise have. And there's times where I've been, you know, developing with another medium and they're like, okay, I want you to tune into that. And I'll be like, I'm not picking up on anything. And they're like, look over here or do this. And I'll be like, oh, (laughs) you know what I mean? And I've been able to do that with my students too. I'm like, look over here and in that way, you know, focus this way or feel in this way. And they're like, oh, right. And so, yes. Todd, I t- truly believe and experience there are millions of things happening every day that we have we just do not have the energy to see or pick up because we're living with what life is right in front of us and we have to to a certain degree to just survive most days. Yeah. We have to really go to that space and be like, I'm putting my attention on that now. And then we'll only still see a fraction. It's a tough sell. It's a tough sell. And that's why a lot of people won't do it. They won't have anything to do with this field because there's no absolutes. There's, there's, there's no map to any, uh, ghostly treasure. (laughs) There's, There's no, there's no instruction manual, unfortunately for this. And it can be very dangerous. So I do. I do think there's enough out there where there is some type of absolute of this is real. Like when, if you, if you really are going to the experienced people and the people with talent and integrity, there, there's so much overlapping experiences. And if you were to get them, if you were to get a team of people who really know what they're doing, you're going to have stuff. Mm -hmm. Like that's just what they do. It's like they, it's, it's going to the office. They show up at the office, they get stuff done. Mm-hmm. It, we're at a point where we have enough to showcase that this stuff is real. That's, that's what I believe. So I think that, you know, it has been all for something. I think, correct. It takes, tell me what you think. It takes so much consistency in this work because you're creating something to a world that has not existed or has not even been taken seriously or, you're you're, re, you're reconstructing perception of society mm-hmm. and that is mind-boggling it can be maddening um it takes tremendous self-preservation and um you know self-care to even be in a state where you can do that um it's it's a tough load and i think yeah a lot of people burn out in- they burn out very quick on that and, and then you have the legwork alone as well. The legwork carrying in the equipment, carrying out the equipment, setting it up, taking it down. Um, so many different things that you have to do to make an investigation work. Yeah. And there's a, there's just thousands of great teams that are out there doing it. Uh, some of them every day they're out there. Yeah. Doing it. They do this for a living. Um, I think it's great. But it is. It's a lot of work and it, it's a lot of fun, too. It's very rewarding. Don't get me wrong. But also, you, you know, you could be out there 16, 20 plus hours and not get a thing either. I feel like the mediums have it easier because, like, you just come in and, yeah. like, their body's the tool, right? But it's, like, for the equipment crew. So I've been a part of, like, let's say fairs where I'm looking at a massage table, maybe a couple, you know, things. Yeah, there's been times where I've had an extensive amount of equipment, but nothing to what you've dealt with. Like, I I think the physical burden would match the kind of spiritual, emotional, mental burden of, 
here I go again, and am I going to get any? Because you have all this equipment on your back and these thoughts on your back. Yeah. With everything that you bring, all the work, you're sitting down, you have everything set up, and you're in this dark area, and you're just wondering to yourself, I wonder if I'm going to get anything. But you have to go in positive. That's you've got to bring it in. You've got to, uh, you know, negative brings negative, just like the old cliche says. You walk in there. That's one thing. Uh, when, when I had an, had the had an investigation team years ago, I, I wouldn't allow. Let's say a couple had an argument before an investigation. I wouldn't allow either of them to come because that could interfere with the energy of, of the place. That that may interfere with the evidence that we capture. Um, plus they may, <laughs> they may get into another argument while they're there. <laughs> they need some yeah. time apart. They, everybody just needs a time out. So th those are the little things that, um, you know, you want to keep in mind when you're out there doing some of this is, is your feelings, your emotions. Um, I'm, I'm not a psychic and bringing a psychic medium to one of these by all means, like I said before, I can't stress it enough. I think, uh, I think it's a softer way to communicate than with our bulky, noisy, scary equipment. I think having a medium is a softer way, uh, perhaps during an initial, during the initial investigation, perhaps bringing a medium out there, especially right out, right, right out of the gate, just having maybe the lead investigator in a medium walk through the place and kind of pick up the energy. Is it, is there a lot of tension? Is there, you know, did something tragic happen here? There's so many, so many different things that could happen. And if you have a medium, they could just help you out and, and they can alleviate hours of just nothing because you know, there's something there. I do think that when people are energy sensitive, they can go mm, check over in that corner. It's not that they'll know everything. It's not that they'll have the strongest communication with the spirit. It's not you know, like just because let's say myself as a medium, just because I have the ability to tap into something doesn't guarantee anything. It's just, I, I, I will help kind of go, mm, I'm sensing this, I'm sensing, sensing that. Or I got, you know, there might be a full connection. It's just, it's putting all the puzzle pieces together. And right, there's certain people that specialize in this type of work. You know, that's that's what I'm talking about. It's like, trust yourself, find your passions, they'll evolve, like your uniqueness will come into play because there's certain mediums where they shine the truest on location with stuff like this. When they're working with a team, when they are, you know, they're able to tap into the house, they're able to tap into the, you know, the past loved one's stories. Like they can even solve mysteries, putting together clues, what happened in the house. There's some people that's literally like the best they do mediumship is in that. And then there's other mediums. They wouldn't know what to do in that house. It's true. That's true. Some mediums, um, some can, can, can hear, what do they call it? Clairaudient. Some are, yeah, clairaudient. Yeah, yeah. but if one, if, if a spirit came out, if they saw an apparition, my goodness, the medium would fly out the window. They'd be gone. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's, there's some that, and so you do have that factor. Um, that you, you have to be, you can't be very skittish. You have to, you have to have some tough skin to, to, to be, I think you have to have tough skin to be a medium anyway, because you're always being interrupted. You yeah, know? But, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whether it, in obvious ways or not obvious ways, um, correct. Your your life is largely not your your own because you're picking up other things on other people or other situations like that are not even local. Yeah. But, you know, it, 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 it's easier than you'd expect unless someone's, like, really, like, in the trenches and then they have to take, they, they have to kind of, like, ooh, dial back your life. we got to make sure your body works. <laughs> yeah. The added so, bonus. It, it's easier than you'd expect and it's more difficult than you'd expect in certain categories. Makes Does that sense. make sense? That so makes it's livable. Sense. It's very livable. Yeah, that makes sense. 
So what, I want to know what got you into, so you kind of had this experience with so it, how, how the, uh, how the station exploded. <laughs> came how about. did nice get rolling? How <laughs> and out was, was back, back in, in 2004. Um, I started teaching lessons to people, EVP lessons, teaching them how to capture ghost voices out there for free. And I needed a way to reach more people because there were so many people that wanted to, to learn and, and they wanted to learn the software, the hardware, the everything. Um, so I, I, I started with the chat room and then, because they didn't have what they have today, of course, back then. Uh, but then we found one, we found an audio server to reach people. I found one uh, and started talking to them just, just like this and teaching all. And, and then that branched into haunted voices radio. The website was called haunted voices.com and it branched into haunted voices radio because we would have people out in the field. We were, we would interview them on how their evidence and uh, th how they collected it, how, how they did their investigations and so forth. We would conduct interviews with, with all kinds of different people, all in the parent community. And then it went from that. Well, okay, I have a show. Now let's see if we can get a station of these like-minded shows together. Um, Haunted Voices, its first broadcast was November 6th of 2004. Wow. And it's still going. It's on hiatus until this fall. But it's still going. Um, and when, oh, I want to ask too. So when you started um, like Haunted Voices or you started teaching people the classes, did you have then the radio schooling or did you get into radio broadcasting around that time? Because what part of the reason, you know, you know, Todd can say it best, but part of the reason you're in hiatus because you're you're in more schooling for radio. This is how passionate you are, and this is how you're evolving your life. Like talk about that, like when you started and where you are now with like the radio. Right. I've, I've always been interested in broadcasting ever since I was a kid. I've always been fascinated with radio and how it works. Uh, Nikolai Tesla, the whole nine yards, all of that. Always been fascinated with it. And then it came to the digital aspect of it where we have the Internet. OK, now you have the terrestrial side, the AM, FM, but I was more interested in the digital side because I'm talking to people, how do we broadcast to them and then get the, get the shows and, and, and all this together. Uh, it was just, it was, it was a kaboom one day. It just, um, the broadcasting school came whenever I, 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 I had a station before this one. Okay. In Chicago. And I wanted to make that station the best I possibly could. So I put myself through school. And then everything I learned, I put into that station, sold it for a profit. This one, I'm not. I don't have that mindset to sell it for a profit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this one, I want it to be a place where people can come, like-minded people can come and, and, and learn from each other. They can comment. They can uh, see one another. Uh, there, there's all kinds of different ways that uh, you can you can uh, uh, reach out to, to them and, and, and all the like minded people come together in one area. Uh, and it, it's it's tough to take a, a listener these days and say, OK, we need you to go here. No, these days you have to bring the show to the listener. OK, they want it right there on their Facebook. They want it right there on their YouTube and so forth. So that's where we're at today, really, with the broadcasting. We're broadcasting it to these different streams now, these social media networks. Uh, it also goes to the website, and that's where the station came about. It's just it's come so far from just a, a, an idea, and then having something on a tiny little audio server overseas reach all these different people. It just completely amazes me how you can reach so many people. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's been a passion. It's always going to be a passion, but the training part, the, the broadcasting school, I use that too. 
um, just help fill this empty, empty void of, of radio that I can't fill because, you know, here it's all around us just like this swipe, swipe, swipe. There it is. But we can't, we can't grab it. It's, it's not tangible. So it's very similar to the paranormal community as well. You know, it's, it's something that uh, it's there, but you can't see it, you know? So I, I love it. I'm just very passionate about it. Radio, sound, spirit, it all comes together and it's constantly evolving within your life. Like when you're done with this next phase of schooling, you might find yourself somewhere else within the field. What I'd like to do, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm currently full-time student and I enjoy being a student because you learn so much about yourself and pushing your limits, but it's what what can be done with today's technology that's what i'm going in there for uh, uh, information technology the latest technology is what I'm in there learning and i want to take that new technology and put it into the station and just blow it out of the water just find a crystal clear way a nice way a perfect way a great way to reach other people to where they just boom click a button. There it is. Um, an experience, give them an experience like they've never had something, something special they can take away, something educational, something entertaining. You know, those are the things that I'm, I'm looking for these days. And it's, it's tough. It's tough to make the paranormal entertaining because some of it's pretty boring. It really is. It's dry. Some of it's pretty dry, but for that, for the people that, that are like-minded that want to learn, They'll come, they'll find it. They'll, they'll seek it out. And, and I'm banking on that. I think that if you actually look at the field within itself, to me, it's, it, you know, it's, it's not dry, but the one dry thing is you can be on location for hours and hours and hours. Right. <laughs> yeah. But like the way that you showcase that could be in so many different ways, like where you're teaching people more about equipment, you're teaching people more about, you know, the com camaraderie of assembling the right team. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you said always show up with a positive mindset, like, like energy attracts like energy. Those are tools that completely change the way that you are going to get contact yeah. with energy yeah. on location. I think that's what I think, like, you know, you're just kind of inspiring me because you're like, well, you know, sometimes it can be boring, but it sounds like, Todd, you have so much experience that you could really formulate like classes or even a show where you're showing people really the heart and how cool that this can be because you have all the tools ready to go. Hmm. Never really thought of that. I mean, because the way things are shot now, they're in kind of this format that has been kind of replayed a lot and you could change the format because you know all the ins and outs. That's quite the possibility. Feels good. Just I, like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> but it, it is wonderful because, you know, Todd usually comes in, he's like, oh, I'm trying this out or, you know, um, I've been learning about this and it's, I like it. I like that, you know, you are always stimulated and there's like a twinkle in your eye, right? That's, that's always wonderful when you're leading the helm. So thank you for that energy. Um, where do you see yourself going in the next, we kind of talked maybe about one little, little nugget, but where do you see yourself going in the next like 10 years with this? Well, in the next 10 years, what I would like to see is a company large enough to sustain itself and buy the host, each host that, that, that has a show with the station, their own equipment, send it right to their home, show them how to set it up. That's, that's where I see myself in 10 years. I see myself having a business such as that to where they want to show, they want everything done for them, all the, te all the technical work, everything's taken care of. They just show up, provide the guests, 
we take care of the rest and we even provide the computers, the microphones, the audio equipment, whatever they need. That's where I see myself in 10 years. That's, that's coming. <laughs> The technology, it's all there. It's all yes, there. technology is coming. I, I have I have ideas and they're sound ideas and they're going to make people happy. They're going to make people be, be the most of themselves that they possibly can. You know, they're going to break them out of their, 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 their comfort zones and they're going to get on there. I want people to have shows. There's so many things to talk about. So many things to talk about. Do it. So true. It's so true. That's why it's like some of these things can never be boring in the right hands. You know what I mean? Like there's so much to talk about and to go over and that people just don't know. So I, I want to ask you, this is like kind of, I think, you know, a multifaceted question, but I, I really do want to know. What do you feel when you've been out on location or just let's say any moment regarding your paranormal um, like journey with self? What has been the moment that has given you the greatest fear? Um, and then what is the moment that has given you the greatest peace? Ooh, what a great question, Kelly. Very good. Um. The biggest fear was when I had brought the entities from the Sally house home with me and it affected my children. My daughter saw her at the end of her bed, ran in there with mom and dad, terrified. Uh, that was my biggest fear was, oh my goodness. And my biggest relief was of the same thing was, was, was that, that is the house that, that both began my career and ended it. It ended it. And me, there was, there was a team of people who helped rid the home of these, of these things and get them back there. That, that was the big relief for me was what, what's, what's the backstory on that? So I can understand. Okay. The yeah. story, it's just, it's a, uh, it's a small colonial home in Atchison, Kansas. The, 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 the story behind that, um, is there was, she was an eight year old girl. She was going to have, uh, she had appendicitis. They were going to, they were taking her appendix out. They didn't give her enough ether. Basically. She woke up during the surgery. No. Yeah. No. And died. Of course. Um, she's fixated with fire. Um, she'll set the, the, the people that live there, Deb and Tony Pickman lived in the home. They were just completely haunted by this, this little girl. She would burn their, their, the flowers. Tony would buy her flowers. She would burn just the center of them. Uh, it was real strange things she would do with fire, set, set dolls on fire on the staircase. Um, strange things like that. So I started investigating the home. And working with the Pikmins and, and things. And, and, you know, of course, I get burned. I get scratched. And I'm, I'm seeing a remote control melt right before my eyes. Crazy things like this. Wow. And then uh, they, they finally had their peace. They made peace with the house. They made peace with themselves. I hadn't made my peace yet, but I, I have now. I have now. Um but at that, at that time I hadn't until after everything was done, but it, it, what it is, it's basically one of those investigations that you become obsessed with. Um, I did I became obsessed with constantly over and over and over and over. So it, 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 it took its toll and I brought it in my home and everything. So, you know, you, you, you've got to be careful. You can't, you can't act like like that learn from my mistake don't repeat it just stay away from the place that's that's i mean it's still right now they they have they have it it's a overnight stay you can stay in there overnight if you want now they're making like an amusement park out of the thing it's it's wow. don't, don't go there people just don't go there yeah that sounds really chaotic yeah yeah and it's sad it's sad that that's what happens in this field a lot of times is just because a place looks spooky People think it's haunted. Now that place looked like the, your average colonial home, old school, and it was on it. 
you know, so looks, looks can be deceiving. Don't, don't judge a book by its cover, you know, all the good stuff. Um, just mind your P's and Q's out there. Use common sense. It's free. Common sense is free, although uh, a treasure in itself. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> this is for, for real, like you know, I just sometimes we, yeah, it's free, but it's we're, yeah. we're not we're not going for what's right there. Um, I I do think right that that's kind of like you kind of open the can of worms, so we're gonna have to have you on in the future. Because it's like it's the portal of the discussion. Because I, I I do think like depending on the mediumship's work or how other people you know connect to spirituality, there's different lanes where how they interact with spirituality and the paranormal research community can deal with various spectrums. And it's really indicative of there's light and dark in the world. Um, and you might come across both energies and. Um, that I think that is a very interesting and, you know, even delicate conversation to be had because some of the stuff is very, is very heavy and you have to pay your proper respects to it. Um, even the light stuff, right. You have to pay your pop proper respects to it. So, um, gosh, okay. So your greatest piece came, can, can you, can you walk us through that? My greatest piece was was when all of that was exterminated from the yeah. it was living it was like living in a tense horror movie you know you would hear things the cabinet doors would would just be open one morning or just open um little strange things would happen uh so the the relief the biggest relief for me was when that mistake that i had made of bringing them in and not giving them closure while I was there, that mistake, you know, I, I learned from it. Thank God. <laughs> so, but it's one of those mistakes. Sometimes they're not forgiven. So I'm thankful for that. So that was my biggest relief was when that was abolished. When well, that was just ridded from home. Gotcha. Yeah. Cause it was just doing that's that. So it was, it so, what, what, so personal. I was saying because oh go ahead go ahead. <laughs> no, I was asking you what. I was just saying uh, your greatest fear and your greatest peace within this work it was wrapped up in something so personal your family mm -hmm. like that yeah that's like a whole nother level um, uh, yeah yeah sometimes you can have energy that does um, trail home with you um, and so that can happen in various forms and yeah um, again. That's why I'm saying we have to have you on a, another time because that's down the rabbit hole. Um, you know, that's not a typical situation, but it does happen. You know, and so a lot of things, you know, in the paranormal and the spiritual world, like there's going to be like these glimmers of, wow, didn't expect that, or that's new frontier, or what's going on here. And and really, it, that's why it's so important to have these discussions and to and to have experts have the discussions because you have so many years behind you and you're still kind of scratching your head, but at least we can have a logical, you know, kind of common sense right. rather yeah. than fear and right. You, you know, and because uh, it's it, woof, the rabbit hole goes deep. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Get out the waiters. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's I think that's the teaser. So um, we will go deeper on a future show. We have just scratched the surface. I want to say hi to Linda and Jackie. Thank you for coming in. Hello, um, and I want to thank uh, Todd for coming in. Uh, you, you can find more of him through WLTKDB because this is you know a labor of his love. The show, um, and where else can people come find you as well? Oh, my goodness. You can uh, find me there at the website, WLTKDB.com. Over there on Paraflix.com, watch season 11 of the Ghost Finders. It's a fun time over there. I narrate that for the guys. Um, and th those, are the, those are about the only two places they can find me pretty much these days, Kelly. <laughs> still, 
still a, a, a good portion on your plate. Um, so radio and paranormal, you know, that's Todd. And we thank you so much for being here, um, showcasing yourself in another way. Um, thank you. Thank you, Kelly. So with that, I'm going to wish everybody listening, love, light, luck, and a smile. Enjoy your week. We'll see you in a few. Take care, everyone.